Hi, I'm Sonia. I, I want to talk to you about uh, the DSM-5, which is this big book that psychologists and psychiatrists and therapists use to diagnose people. And I want to talk about it because I think there are some misconceptions out there about what it's useful for and where it's just our attempt as humans to try to put people into neat categories in a way that maybe misses the, the whole person. Uh, and so um, I'm gonna talk about three things that I think everybody should know about the DSM-5. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the dangers of the DSM-5, and specifically in regards to self-diagnosing and other diagnosing, if you're not a licensed, trained professional. Uh, th this book, um, when we start to learn it in our doctoral program, they told us, they said, be careful because you will start to see yourself in a lot of these descript descriptions and you will start to think that you have way more disorders than you do. And so this is also the danger for the layperson, right? Like there are symptoms, if you think about the symptoms and the categories, these are all things that are present to one degree or another in people across the spectrum. And what makes it a disorder versus just a quirk or versus just a natural tendency is how it impacts a person's life. So just looking at a symptom list is not necessarily going to be enough to tell you if your friend has borderline personality disorder or if your ex is narcissistic or if you have OCD. You're not going to be able to accurately figure that out. And that's not to say that you're not smart. I'm sure you are. It's just there are other factors that influence whether or not somebody's diagnosed. And there are nuances even within diagnoses to how people respond and how they present. Uh, and that's what we'll talk about a little bit in the second point. So the reason there's a, a risk in um, diagnosing yourself or diagnosing somebody else um, is because even within each category of the DSM-5, of one specific diagnosis, there um, will be some level of symptoms that are presented, you know, and it can be from like 6, 10 to 15 or 20, depending on the specific disorder. And what the DSM specifically says is that a person may present with three out of five of these particular symptoms or four out of seven of these particular symptoms. So as you can see, if there's a list of 15 or 20 and people are presenting with four or seven to qualify, that's going to look very different depending on the person sitting in front of you. And this is why we train and and work with people to help us begin to like be able to pick tease apart these these differences and recognize when uh, you know a disorder is presenting in one way as opposed to the other and so you know you may have a friend who needs to have everything in a very orderly fashion and she's very structured about what she wears and she always has to you know be somewhere at a certain time that could be just a quirk of her personality but if you consider yourself an armchair psychologist all of a sudden that person might have ocd and that's a great disservice, not only to the person, but also to the disorder and the people who are really struggling with the disorder. We do not all have mental health problems, and we do not all need to have mental health problems to need help and to need connection and to need to be able to talk to another human being. So the last point I wanna make about the DSM-5 as a diagnostic tool uh, and I, I find this really interesting and important, is that 
Um, there's a small criteria for every disorder that most people aren't aware of, and that is that to meet the criteria for any disorder, you have to have significant distress or impairment in one or more areas of life functioning. So what does that mean? That means uh, areas of life functioning are work, relationships with community, school, um, parents. And, and so if you have difficulty navigating any of those areas of life because of the symptoms, then it's a diagnosis. If you have a full, healthy, happy life, and you have five symptoms of anxiety, but it, it doesn't impair your ability to be successful, and it doesn't cause distress to you, it's not a disorder. And that doesn't mean you still can't get help for it or talk to somebody about it. But um, don't worry if you see yourself in some of these diagnoses, because we all do. And that's just because we're human, and this is just a collection of symptoms that humans have. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. If you did, please like it below, and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we're going to be producing more and more videos on a variety of different mental health topics. And please reach out if there's something specific you would like us to cover or address in an upcoming video.